let's see if I can start the video here. Okay. Don't move yet. We're ready to go. Okay, we're good. Good evening, everyone. The Council Public Meeting for Wednesday, September the 9th, 1973. I will read a, there are a number of, there's three applications. There are a number of, um, we do have delegations for two of them. However, public hearing statement, if a person or public body does not make an oral expression, uh, submission, sorry, at a public meeting or make a written submission to the city of Richmond Hill in respect of a proposed official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment and or plan of subdivision or condominium. The person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the city council to the LPAT and may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before LPAT in the opinion of the tribunal. And these are the reasonable grounds to do so. So if everyone is here, if you've got, today is the day that you might wanna make your comments because uh, written or not, send them into the, to the office, uh, the clerk's office, send them into planning. And with that, we shall start our meeting. We have three items here. I am uh, looking for my agenda here. So the first item is, okay, we need to adopt it. That would be a good idea. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. Councilor West, Councilor Pirelli, all those in favor opposed. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest in the nature thereof? Members of council, seeing none. Uh, our scheduled business, our first item is a request for comments, zoning bylaw amendment application, Domano Road developments, and our staff will bring that, uh, explain that application to us. I don't have a list of peoples. So if they would come forward, please. Good evening, Mayor Barrow and members of council and the public. This first public meeting tonight involves a zoning bylaw amendment application for the lands municipally known as 12955A and 12955B Bathurst Street. Next slide, please. The subject lands are located on the east side of Bathurst Street, south of King Road and north of Vetney Drive. The surrounding land uses include a low density residential homes to the east and south, commercial services uses, including a gas station, car wash, and convenience store to the north, a stormwater management pond to the northeast and residential homes and farmland to the west in the township of King. The subject lands are presently zoned local commercial under bylaw 13 or sorry 313-96 as amended which permits a limited range of commercial uses such as a bake shop, convenience store, day nurseries, financial institutions and personal service shops. Next slide please. The applicant is seeking to amend the zoning bylaw to add medical offices businesses and professional offices, artists or photography studios, private clubs, laundry and dry cleaning establishments as additional permitted uses to the site plan approved commercial plaza, as well as site specific parking standards for the subject lands. The application has been circulated to internal departments and external agencies for review and comment. The purpose of this report is to provide council and the public with an overview of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and has been structured for information purposes only with a recommendation that all comments be referred back to staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chang. And now on behalf of the applicant, Clio, there you go. Sir? Need your volume, sir? Need your volume? Mr. I need to be unmuted. Is that, can you hear that? Yes, we, we're, we're here. You're here. Good. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, staff. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. I think Doris covered the uh, application quite aptly. Um, some time ago, we got site plan approval for this property for two buildings that you see there, and they're actually under construction um, as approved by the site plan. 
during that period, we, uh, we went back and sought some variances to mainly for front yard and sort of what I would call housekeeping um, variances, which the Committee of Adjustment actually did approve. Now, since that time, our client has been able to procure a lease with a dental uh, practitioner. And that's really what brings us here this evening because the, uh, the dental practitioner was not a permitted use within the zoning bylaw. So we came forward with our um, reports, namely the, the parking analysis, which was really the, the crux of the matter. And we were able to determine that the 25 spaces that had been approved through the site plan were adequate to facilitate the dental practice that is uh, being proposed for this particular site. The daycare itself, um, actually the numbers have been reduced from 84 to 68. So that kind of helps the parking situation going forward. The, our parking uh, expert is available to speak, but I really don't want to belabor it unless council has uh, any questions of me or any member from the public. But uh, we do seek uh, this approval to, in essence, in essence facilitate the, uh, the dental practitioner. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, two delegates here, Sheena Basari. Ms. Basari. There we are. Basari. Yes. Unmute. Start video. Start my video. There we are. Okay, girls. There you go. Okay. I see the whole family there. <laughs> Hi. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Ray. Alex, you want to talk? Hey, Sorry, we kind of missed it. We were just like we're trying, trying to, to join. join. Here. We, had some trouble. we were just on the YouTube version where we can hear everything that was kind of going on. Can they hear us? We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you all. Okay. Sorry. So we kind of missed it. You guys just want to like recap a little bit. So like obviously we're against like the additional like commercial use and the units and stuff like that. Like we did submit to, to Ryan Van and Doris like. Um, our petition and like we're pretty much representing like, the whole community we have about 80 signatures that are on it and there was a list of like points that we pointed out like against like what's happening over here okay. another one of our concerns is the streets are already built very narrow and you have double people parking on the sides of the streets the streets are so tight that a fire truck barely fits through with the extra traffic coming through up and down the street it's going to cause havoc for the young children that are on the street playing Right now we have residents that rip up and down the street and all they're gonna use it for is an entrance from Bathurst onto Bettany. We're not against the growth of the community and we support the building, even though the height of it is what isn't what it was supposed to be. We support growth in the community, but we do not support the entrance onto Bettany. And we have a good majority. We had about two hours we were given to collect signatures. And in that two hours on the Friday of a long weekend, we've had more than 85% support from this street from the residents that were home at three o'clock on a friday afternoon this is a major concern for everybody on our street we have on the corner of bettany where this is going to loop around from king's hill there are probably 25 to 30 kids under the age of 10 that ride their bikes and play on the street on a daily basis and people already speed up and down the street and one of the residents that we approached that has a speeding problem on this street is the only resident that was in support of this entrance. Mm -hmm. And her first comment was, why wouldn't I support it? It makes me easier to get to Bathurst when I'm late. Mm -hmm. So people are gonna use this as an entrance to get onto Bathurst when they're late. And with the extra traffic in the morning, with parents parking and stopping for the daycare and so on and so forth is a little worrisome. And not to mention that private club or social club or whatever it is that really concerns me because when you start thinking social club and private club and stuff like that a few of them start to pop in your head and a lot of problems that have happened in the woodbridge area lately with social clubs and so on and so forth we don't need that kind of exposure to our young kids in this area it's just not a place to have something like that like adding additional units for commercial or office is obviously just going to bring more traffic if you were to drive by here you can already tell it's a very limited parking spaces the way that the buildings were built so once those parking spaces are full especially with the daycare like this is a massive daycare once those parking like spaces are full where else are they going to park they're going to park right along our street blocking our driveways 
being in front of our house, like it's just going to become like a severe issue here. And this is, these are two different residents you're speaking. This is not just one resident. Yeah. This is two different residents. And we also have a problem with the snow plowing on the street as it is. The people who take care of our snow leave the streets maybe a foot and a half to two feet away from the curb on each side plowed. So it only really allows you one lane of access in the winter. So that one lane of access going down these already narrow streets is just, a recipe for disaster. Okay. We understand that the builder wants to build. We understand that the, the town wants to grow and we understand that the community wants to grow, but we live in such a beautiful area that Oak Ridges won't even allow open space to build. They want to build on the corner of Bathurst and King on the Northwest corner. They want to put a golf club, but Oak Ridges and the council won't give that to the builders because they want to keep it the way it is nice, open, beautiful, pretty, country-like. This is why people moved in here to have that quietness. And now you're gonna put this big building here, like you guys wanna put a Young in Bloomington, which is gonna ruin that area as well. And I believe Councillor Barros is a big, big, you know, doesn't, doesn't like what's going on over there. So, you know, we're not the only people that aren't happy with the building that's going on. We understand growth. We want growth. We want our community to strive. We want our housing prices to go up. But this is not going to do that to our community. No. Every resident that we knocked on this door was kind of dumbfounded how this is going on under their eyes. They didn't even know this was being built here. And to have council mm -hmm. meetings and town meetings about this before homes weren't even built here and didn't have the residents a chance to give their input isn't fair to the people that paid big money to live in this area. Yeah. These are not little priced homes that we're living in and that we're trying to sell and that we're growing our young families. People moved to this area for a reason. And we want to keep it the reason why we moved here. And with this growth here, which is already an eyesore to the community, it is absolutely horrendous to look at the, si the height of this building and the position that you guys wanted to put it here. I had a friend that worked for North Star when this subdivision was being built. And from my understanding, back then, this was supposed to be a playground. Hi. Sir, you have five minutes. Yeah. Okay. You get everything out. All right, we just want to say thank you very much for your comments. Uh, this is an application that's been brought to us. So we're asking for everybody's opinion and we appreciate that uh, the two of you have uh, brought that forward this evening. We have one more person that wishes to speak, Joseph Petranker at 75, Bethany. Let's give a moment to... Yeah, Pet Petranger, or, or with yes, it? I'm here. Okay. Uh, sorry, just on just on the phone, or did you wish? You know what? Uh, this you guy that spoke before me. Uh, do you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, so I just uh, I, I'm a neighbor. I live on 75 Bethany which is about 100 meter or even less from the new plaza. And I fully support the guy that spoke before me. And I don't have small kids. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm older than a, having babies, but still I think it's, it, he had the great arguments and I don't have anything to, to add to him. And I just want the, the council to pay attention, very good attention to what uh, this uh, the other guy said uh, before me. That's what I have to say. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. All right, that's the last person we have for discussion. We will go to Councillor Barros, the local councillor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you to the residents that have added their voice to, uh, to this application. Um, like I think one of the, the residents, the first one mentioned was, this plaza was already previously um, planned. And the, the application now is to allow different uses in the plaza. Um, I, I agree, the, the entrance is very problematic. Um, and we're gonna have to work hard at coming up with solutions to not make it a problem in your lives. Part of the problem is the region of York would not allow the applicant to put in both turning that's only allowing a right in right out 
So if any resident goes from the subdivision to the plaza to get to Bathurst, all they can do is make a right-hand turn. They can't go south on Bathurst. So, you know, there's going to be some people that they're going to find out, oh, this isn't any helpful, and they'll they'll continue using their regular routes. Um, so I, 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 I feel 100% for the residents living in that street. It is going to be problematic, but you've got my commitment. I'll, I'll work with you. I'll try to figure out how we can make it as, as, uh, as good as we can. Um, I, I do support, uh, Mr. Mayor, I do support the additional uses. Um, there's, a, there's a huge demand in our communities for childcare, and there's not enough facilities being built to actually put these businesses in. Um, so although we may have some traffic issues, we're going to have those traffic issues regardless of the uses that are in that plaza. Um, so those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. And I, I know we'll be referring this back to staff. Um, thank you very much. I'll move the, uh, the motion that we uh, receive all comments and send them to staff. Okay. Um, any other comments or a seconder on the uh, Councillor Perel? Second? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. A uh, brief comment. Um, when I was listening to the speakers speak, um, I, I believe they were speaking about um, the entrance. And I, I think that's a fate complet. Um, the entrance is going to be out on Tabather. So I don't believe there's anything we can do at this point to change that. And I don't think that was the purpose of the application. Uh, I believe the application is about uh, making accommodations for different uses. And uh, I've had conversation with the applicant in the past. And because of COVID, uh, the applicant is having difficulty trying to find different types of um, you know, tenants, as it were. Uh, so we're in some challenging times, Mr. Mayor, as we all know. And uh, I, I guess what we need to do is, uh, you know, uh, refer this back to staff and and uh, maybe work with the residents who uh, see this as problematic to their neighborhood and try to come up with a solution as uh, Councillor Barros mentioned. So I'm happy to second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor, referring everything back to staff, opposed, carried. Thank you all, thank you. Our next application is request for comments, zoning bylaw amendment and draft subdivision application for Zonic developments 47 elm grove avenue and our staff, philip liu planner will explain the application <laughs> to us good evening mayor Mayor, members of council and the public the second public meeting tonight involves a proposed zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision for the lands municipally known as 47 elm grove avenue Next slide, please. The subject lands are located on the south side of Elm Grove Avenue and west of Young Street and have a total lot area of 0 0.293 hectares or 0 0.73 acres. Uh, the lands contain an existing single detached dwelling and are comprised of the rear portion of the lands municipally known as 47 Elm Grove Avenue, in addition to the rear portion of 49 Elm Grove Avenue, which have been severed and consolidated for future development purposes. Uh, abutting uses include existing single detached dwellings to the north, east, south, and west. Um, it is noted that the lands to the east are subject to an active zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision application uh, to permit the construction of 13 single detached dwellings. And to the south is a draft approved plan of subdivision comprised of 12 single detached dwellings. Uh, the property is located within the neighborhood designation of the city's official plan, which generally permits low density development as well as medium density residential uses uh, subject to specific policy criteria within the official plan. Next slide, please. The applicant has submitted development applications to facilitate the construction of three single detached dwellings and a public road extension. Uh, the subject lands are located in the Elm Grove, Maple Grove, Aubrey Avenue residential infill study area and is in keeping with approved development proposals in the nearby area. Next slide, please. The purpose of the report is to provide council and the public with an overview of the applicant's development proposal and has been structured for information purposes only with the recommendation that all comments be referred back to staff for your consideration. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. We have, um, I guess, am I dealing with Evans planning at this point in time? Through it this time? Sorry, I just got kicked out. No, Nicole, thank you. Sorry. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, my name is Nicole Samponia from Evans Planning, Inc., acting on behalf of the owner at 47 Elm Grove Avenue. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, Philip has given a good summary of the application, so I'm just going to add a few details. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So through our draft plan application, we'll be conveying a half a portion of the public road, which you can see on the, on the slide in front of you, it's located at block four. Um, this will allow for a complete municipal road to be conveyed and built through the Carvel site to the south. And this will ultimately connect to the future road to the east and eventually to the west as well. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Also through our rezoning application, we're seeking additional lot coverage of 45% and a reduced side yard setback of 1.2 meters. Um, this is consistent with what's been approved uh, for the lands uh, by Carvel to the south and also for the land shown in blue. These are both approved uh, in 2019 and 2017 for the same standards. Um, furthermore, the land shown in red uh, are also seeking the same zone standards. Uh, so we believe that's consistent um, with what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, I don't have anything further to add at this point, but if council or the public have any comments, I'd be pleased to answer them. Thank you very much. Okay, we have one delegate and it is, uh, I pull it, it's at 35 Maple Grove Avenue. And again, Cheryl. No, I'm sorry, we have no comments. We're just here. Um, participating. I'm oh, sorry, no comments? No comments, thank you. Okay, not a problem. And we will go back to everyone, Councillor, Councillor Farrell. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's the Oak Ridge Show tonight. Um, I'm happy to move the motion to accept all comments, refer them to staff, and see an expedited application process uh, on this one also. Thank you. Okay. Is there a second there for the referral? Back to staff. Thank you, Councilor Liu. All right, any comments from anybody? Council members? Seeing none, all those in favor? Referral back, staff, thank you. Opposed, carry, Sir. unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next is request for comment, zoning bylaw amendment application, CARE First, Seniors and Community Service Association. And this is uh, a submission that we've had for a while, zoning bylaw amendment, et cetera. And our planning person, Simone Fiore, is here to uh, describe the application to us. Good evening, Mayor Barrow, members of council, and the public. The final public meeting tonight involves a zoning bylaw amendment application for the lands municipally known as 9893 Leslie Street. Next slide, please. The subject lands are located on the east side of Leslie Street, south of Major Mackenzie Drive East, in the city's Hedford Business, Biz Hedford Business Park. The lands have frontage of approximately 39.27 meters along Leslie Street, and a total site area of approximately 0 0.42 hectares. The property abuts a Montessori school to the north, the Rouge River Valley corridor to the east, institutional uses to the south, and low density residential uses and Leslie Street to the west. The lands are designated employment area in the city's official plan. This designation permits a range of high performance industrial and office uses. The existing city policies do not recognize an institutional use as an employment land use, and the request to permit this use within an employment area designation is considered an employment land conversion, which is subject to municipal comprehensive review. The region has undertaken a municipal comprehensive, re comprehensive review with respect to employment area conversions to inform the update of the region of York official plan. On February 26th of this year, city staff brought forward a report outlining the city's input into the municipal comprehensive review process 
at which time council advised the region of their interest in considering a municipally initiated conversion of employment lands to permit a long-term care facility and associated community uses on the subject lands. As a result, city staff are currently undertaking municipally initiated official plan amendment to redesignate the subject lands to Leslie Street institutional area to permit institutional uses. This municipally initiated OPA will be considered in advance of the MCR process. The subject lands are zoned high performance commercial industrial historic zone and flood zone under bylaw 41390 as amended. The current zoning does not permit an institutional long term care facility as proposed by the subject application. As such, the applicant is proposing to rezone the subject lands to Leslie Street institutional area zone and flood zone under bylaw 41390 as amended with site specific development standards to permit the long term care facility and associated community uses to facilitate the subject proposal. Next slide, please. Specifically, the applicant is seeking to amend the zoning bylaw to permit a six-story long-term care facility and associated community uses. The proposed development would facilitate the construction of an institutional building, providing long-term care, medical, and active community center uses for seniors. Staff have circulated the applications to internal departments and external agencies for review and comment. The purpose of the report is to provide council and the public with an overview of the applicant's development proposal and has been structured for information purposes only with a recommendation that all comments be referred back to staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pirai. All right, um, now on behalf of the applicant, I've got Mr. Dickey, and then there's uh, the chief executive officer who wishes to speak first and or second, uh, just on your, how you want to come out, come out to this. And there's one other member of the, the community that wants to speak after that. Um, yes, good morning, your worship, or good evening, your worship, members of uh, council. I would prefer if Helen, the CEO of Care First, spoke first. Okay, just, it, it's just trying to determine who Sure. Ms. Leong, how are you this evening? Uh, thank you so much, Mayor and uh, Councillors, Deputy Mayor. Thank you so much. So first of all, on, um, on behalf of CAFRS, I uh, would like to express our um, gratitude to the uh, City of uh, Richmond Hill Council. Actually, in year 2005, um, generously, uh, kindly uh, provided a one-time capital grant of a million dollars to CAFRS. Uh, for CAFRS to develop a uh, community um, center at the uh, 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 the site I mean earlier I mean described. So can I have slide number two? So um, basically um, we are so thankful and would like to um, appeal um, uh, apply to the city of um, Richmond Hill uh, for the development um, say like of a community hub plus 120 bed a long-term care home in uh, the uh, described site. And basically uh, why we would like to do that and um, because basically as a responsive um, service provider, community-based service provider, we fully aware there is the recognized needs for long-term care beds and community hub space in Richmond Hill. And this is exactly in response to the York Region 2018 Action Plan that which was highlighted that uh, that uh, in uh, Richmond Hill, uh, basically, if you look at bullet number two of the slide, that it is projected by uh, year 2026, there will be the, uh, actually in Richmond Hill, the greatest number of people on long-term care home waiting list. And in Richmond Hill, actually it needs to have, say like a uh, thousand four beds, while in Markham, another 818 beds in order to meet the, uh, the population needs. And at the same time, uh, because of the fast growing aging population in Richmond Hill, there needs to have the uh, strengthening of the social infrastructure to support the growth of the population and specifically um, the, um, the aging population. So can I go to slide number two? So slide number three, um, so I won't go into the details because the slide basically is being I mean, presented already 9893 Leslie Street. So if I can go to slide number four. So slide number four, just to give you, um, say like an over, I mean, some sort of a view of the existing 
uh, uh, property right now, and uh, which is a, a really old uh, built uh, almost like uh, over a hundred years old property there. And uh, we would like to propose to redevelop this piece of land to have a 120 bed long-term care home plus a community hub. So if I can have the next slide, slide number five. So slide number five is the proposal, um, which we basically have submitted to the Ministry of Long-Term Care because we would like to get hold of the opportunity, the Ministry of Long-Term Care, which they put out a call for proposal last October, in October 2019. So it is, uh, I mean, a, a, a very um, special timing that the uh, provincial government would like to um, build another, say like 30,000 bed in Ontario. So we would like to grab hold of this funding opportunity to redevelop this uh, piece of land into a long-term care home plus a campus of care. So in the um, paragraph one, you will see the uh, features of this uh, long-term care bed. It will be providing really um, a high acuity, uh, say like uh, SS beds to people who really need the kind of complex care. And specifically, we are designating a portion of that to um, say like for the Francophone community. And section number two, we just highlight some of the features of the county hub. So basically it's not just to uh, serve the 120 uh, residents, but it is also to serve the whole community and the neighborhoods with like a gym, library, a community kitchen, a medical primary medical center, and also a service center coordinating a community home care for the people living around the uh, the neighbor in the neighborhoods around the uh, the facility so mm -hmm. if you go yeah sorry if you go to slide number six so we just would like to um draw um counselors attention that uh, kefers basically we we find ourselves to be the right provider because kefers we have a long history of serving the community and the seniors we have a full spectrum of community services like uh, we do have 300 personal support workers. We do have a family practice center with uh, close to 10 family physicians plus a team of specialists. So um, with all this experience, we find that uh, we will be really, um, say like a uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 qualified to provide this and develop into a, uh, a community hub with that will also serve the, the loss of people because say like it is projected in year 2040, one out of four of our population will be age 65 and over. So the last slide, size number seven, please. So we'll just highlight some of the benefits of redeveloping this piece of land yeah. to serve the community of uh, Richmond Hill to provide strengthen the social infrastructure to bridge the surface gap for the aging population to have the one-stop access center so that have everybody have easy access to say like whether it's social services, healthcare services, and specifically the long-term care, um, I mean, residential care for the seniors. So in a nutshell, it will enhance the community connectivity and also provide more commun community space for the neighborhoods in, uh, in the surrounding, um, I mean, uh, say like neighborhoods. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, we want to thank the council again for the um, ongoing support to the um, nonprofit sector and care for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Dow. And uh, Mr. Dickey, Urban Grove. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I will be very brief. Uh, first of all, thank you to Simone. I think she did an excellent overview of the proposal. Uh, she hit all the points, so there's very little more for me to add. Suffice to say that uh, Care First and myself, we are committed to working with staff to work through the technical matters. And we have submitted a number of supporting reports um, with this application. And we look forward to getting the comments back from staff and sitting down with them and working out uh, all issues and items that may get raised as a result. So with that, I'll be pleased to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. We have a, uh, where did you go? Yes, there's one uh, delegation, uh, Joyce Horner, Love Street, Ms. Horner.
Ms. Horner? No. There you go. Sorry, Ms. Horner, you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry. We can hear you, yes. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can do that. Go ahead, Joyce. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, councillors, staff, and community. I'm speaking tonight to the matter of the property located at 9893 Leslie Street in the hamlet of Hedford. Uh, on this property sits a heritage building that is an integral part of our small historic hamlet and community. Here first, the applicant and owner of the property has shown themselves to be responsible owners of this heritage building in the community for some time now. Disappointingly though, Care First have said that they do not wish to incorporate this building into their plans, yet they have not presented any plans for the community to review. Also, it's my understanding that they have not yet applied for or received government approval for the funding of the project. Um, I'd like to give some history on this significant and well-built actual red brick heritage house. It was built circa 1905 by my great-great-grandmother, Nancy Ann Brillinger Horner, widow of Jacob Horner. They owned the historic Hedford Mance, which remains to the south, and split the manse lot in order to build this house at 9893 Leslie for, their th for three of their four daughters. The other daughter, my great grandmother and her family would live on the farm across the road at 9920 Leslie Street, where I am, known as the third line, also known as the third line then. The historic Jacob Horner house is where I was born and still reside. And 9893 and 9920 Leslie are very clearly seen in close proximity from each of their sites. It is my hope that the city Care First and the community and other partners will be willing to work together on this project so that the heritage building can be incorporated into the project as other owners in the hamlet have also done. This would help to maintain the heritage site of the hamlet as well as in helping the new building to take a step back from the road so as not to appear so overwhelming and looming. Uh, the other issues of concern that I have are the height of the building, which they're asking for six stories, I believe, which turns out to be actual seven stories with mechanical. The town bylaws for four stories, even the Staples office and others uh, to the south in the business park are only four stories. Uh, I'm also con concerned about green space for facility residents, and as well as the erosion at the back of the lot down beside the creek to the east. Uh, the traffic is a concern. It'll be a concern for everyone, but we can't get rid of traffic. It's, it is what it is in Richmond Hill now. But my main concern is for the safety of staff, medical vehicles, visitors, patients, customers to the building, maintenance and others entering and exiting into time of day and evening bumper to bumper traffic. Uh, Victoria Daycare already deals with this on a regular basis and, and knows it's quite congested. And I feel that they should be consulted on this issue as well because that'll double that up there for sure. Uh, I recognize that the city will be in need of more facilities like Care First. I think that's great, but I wonder if this is such, this it being such an ambitious uh, project, if it's really suited to this, this lot at this location. Um, I'd also like to note that uh, the Horner House is listed in the heritage inventory for the city of Richmond Hill and has been on the designation list. As it was well maintained and not under threat, other properties had taken priority as to designation. Uh, I have no doubt that my family that built the house would be happy and proud to see it used for the purpose of long term care. I, I have no problem with the development uh, itself. One minute. I feel that the pro if the project does proceed, it would be an asset to the city and the hamlet if done in a respectful manner. So thank you for your time tonight and listening to me. Well, thank you for your comments. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go to uh, Council Yu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, you know, for the applicant and staff presentation, and thank you for the delegates, uh, Joyce. Um, yeah, it's uh, there's no doubt that uh, Care First has been a very good community partner to Richmond Hill for many years, and you know, with the aging population. You know, we definitely need something like this, you know, um, high quality long term care provided by um, uh, the renowned um, uh, community service provider um, care first. On August 26, I hosted a virtual residence uh, meeting. Um, Councilor West were there, uh, Deputy Mayor Pirelli was there. Thank you for being there. And um, a lot of residents uh, participated over 35. Um, Resident, residents participated and uh, also staff were there too. So thank you staff. Um, you know, the, the, the mainly the majority of residents, they are um, in favor of this idea and definitely no doubt that we need something like this in the community. But most of their concerns, um, I think Joyce has, um, has says it all. Um, I don't want to repeat everything she said, but uh, you know, in terms of the height, in terms of the heritage component, um, the traffic parking, um, and is all um, being you know expressed by the uh, the residents. So I'm sure that staff will work with um, the applicants to address all these issues and um, also the issues that illustrated on page seven and eight of the staff report. Um, we all welcome, you know, don't get me wrong, we, we all welcome this uh, high quality long term care. Um, I think maybe looking at the site plan, someone will think that it's a bit ambitious, uh, the height is a little bit too high, and um, I'm sure that can be worked out. So um, I'll give it to the hands of our, our professional staff and uh, work with the applicant. Hopefully we can come up with something that is uh, appropriate on that location. So that's my comments and um, thank you once again for the opportunity to speak, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for speaking. Councilor Chan, do you wish to speak in? Yes, I'd like to, uh, I presume, uh, Councilor New moving a motion to receive all comments. Yes, I am okay. moving the motion. Thank okay. you. Okay, so uh, I'm interested in uh, second the motion. And also, uh, I want to say that uh, certainly, as uh, uh, Councillor uh, uh, Neil just mentioned, and this is, uh, in a sense, a welcoming addition uh, to the city if it's done right. And I think uh, that, um, thank you, the delegate, uh, Ms. Horner, certainly a lot of history of her family there. And I think that uh, it's good that we have the CEO of Care First and also the, the representative here listen. And I noted that at Zoom, they listen not only attentively, they're nodding the head, taking into the full consideration of what the delegate Ms. Joyce has said and certainly the other 30 plus residents uh, participate in the meeting about you know 10 days ago or so. Uh, and I think the important part I like to emphasize is that uh, number one, yes, Care First have a proven history that serving seniors, serving the community and uh, family health team that uh, Ms. Lang has talked about. Uh, now, one aspect is that in addition to some of the issues that been mentioned uh, in the report, such as uh, Ms. Honda mentioned about uh, in the back in terms of issue with, uh, relating to the environmental uh, concerns, um, the traffic that people are talking about height and also how to integrate with the uh, heritage property. But I just want to seek maybe clarification for Mr. Mayor to our staff. Uh, I think it was mentioned by someone, uh, what about ambulances? Uh, I would tend to think and that staff would advise me differently. Uh, that probably would be unlikely, would it? Or maybe the applicant can help uh, for, this is a long-term care. This is not an emergency hospital. So I, I honestly cannot foresee ambulance coming in and out or whatever, but help me understand for you, Mr. Chair, or someone. Go ahead. Um, can I um, say like response to uh, Councillor Attends, uh, 
question. Mm-hmm. So actually, um, it's the uh, it's a, it's been raised say, like uh, ten days ago uh, in um, one of the uh, committee members also uh, concerned about the noise, uh, the sirens, ambulance, and I uh, explained and clarified that uh, exactly this is a long term care home. So basically, uh, it is not a uh, hospital, and there is no emergency department uh, taking uh, patients to the emergency department for um, say like acuity kind of treatment. And besides um, the benefit that we will be uh, uh, having a family practice medical center there. And the medical center, the team of medical staff will be looking after the residents uh, residing in the long-term care homes. So basically it will be, there will be a significant reduction of taking patients to hospitals, uh, or say like uh, having an uh, ambulance coming to take uh, the residents, the seniors residing the long-term care home to the hospital because they will be basically looked after by the team of medical staff co-locating in the same facility, in the same campus. So that's why we are talking about, we are building not a um, the long-term care home, but a campus of care a campus of care that is social and medical healthcare combined together. So that will be that um, issue that we definitely um, say like uh, will address. And basically that will be a uh, no concern and no worry and should not really worry about this um, issue about noise and um, ambulance. Thank you for the answer. And, and I think that's important to clarify because there's traffic, there's noise that uh, Ms. Lang just alluded to. And uh, I, for one, I, I, I have witnessed uh, as many of us on council that the long history care for us have been caring first in our community of that integrated holistic approach. And it, uh, I think it's important the applicant in this case, in their good heart, uh, have uh, entering the good faith discussion uh, with the our staff, with also resident and local council to work something out that would be something our community can truly uh, not only have a facility like that, but I'm also encouraged by what they say it could be added, enhanced the community capacity. Uh, presumably there will be committed gym <laughs> uh, that uh, even people in the area or even in the other places in the city of Richmond Hill can uh, 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 gain access to and enhances our capacity to serve our residents at large uh, in partnership. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I, uh, I, I certainly can see there are some wrinkles need to be worked on, uh, but uh, hopefully that everything can work out and it'll be win, win, win uh, for all. Thank you. And I'm happy to second the motion as I said, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor West. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the uh, presentation uh, for all the Care First uh, folks and all the work you do in the community. Um, it, it really is, uh, you, you are a very big part of the community. And we appreciate that. Um, thank you also to uh, Ms. Horner for her delegation. Um, it's uh, one of the things, I, I won't re- repeat everything that was said, and, and I, I also should mention, I, I do appreciate uh, Cou- Councillor Liu have, hosting the meeting the other day and, and having an opportunity to hear some of the uh, residents' concerns and so on. Um, the one thing I, I would like to highlight, though, um, as you know, a member of Heritage Richmond Hill, there there is a heritage building there, and I mean, in in fairness, it, you know, it hasn't gone through the analysis um, to you know look at the the possibility that it merits uh, heritage designation. But in my experience, from the last little while, a building that age, there's a very good possibility that it does. And then I will say that you know, Hedford is actually a very interesting part of Richmond Hill that has a, a very interesting history. And I think that you know, we need to do whatever we can do in that specific area to maintain and protect and enhance uh, the assets that are historical in nature in that area. I think that there is an opportunity, um, I have to assume that there is an opportunity that the uh, heritage building that's there now could be in some way um, creatively incorporated into any sort of a new building. And I would very much like um, Care First and uh, the architects and so on working on the project to uh, very seriously explore that. Um, I think it probably, you know, at some point in time, as is alluded to in the staff report, um, there will need to be um, uh, that application will need to come before Heritage Richmond Hill for its consideration. But 
um, it would be really great to see uh, a plan in place that the building can be uh, incorporated. I mean, and in fairness, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the entire building. I mean, it can be, you know, uh, done in a way that that respects and enhances the facade, at least of that building and, and, and makes it a, you know, a meaningful structure within the, the new and exciting structure that you're building. Um, we've seen many examples of that in uh, in the GTA, but we're also seeing some ex examples of that in Richmond Hill. Um, and I, I think that uh, kudos to architects that are able to have the, uh, you know, the creativity and the foresight to be able to take a historical asset like that and, and leverage it into a really unique part of uh, a brand new building. Um, I think that's very exciting and it would be a really great asset. Uh, well, it will be continue to be a great asset for the community. So that would be my um, uh, comment, Mr. Mayor. Um, although I, I will reiterate that I'm very much uh, in favor of seeing this needed um, facility. And, uh, you know, I, I think the, the height is something that, you know, the staff and Care First and so on can hash out and decide, you know, what's appropriate. I don't think a six story building is overly high. Um, and, you know, it's, it is pretty much in line with the kind of thing that we would expect on that and surrounding land in that kind of commercial industrial area. So you're definitely in the ballpark. I just would hope that you'd uh, consider the heritage aspect, um, you know, in a, in a creative way. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Any other comments? Time, Councillor Paris. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I can't speak on behalf of all the members of council at this point, but I think it's fair to say, um, given some of our past um, actions, when it comes to having a development of this nature in our community, we embrace it and, and we, we thank Care First for coming forward. But when it comes to the, the heritage uh, building that's there, that's remaining, um, a plaque, um, maybe some door frames, um, but the building in its entirety can likely go. Um, in, in the end, it's, it's, it's not going to provide the, um, the enrichment that the, the building and its services are going to provide to Richmond Hill. Um, so I would say as one member of council, you know, see how you can, you know, you can do a plaque or you can do some window frames or something in the building. Um, a, a great example is in Oak Ridge is there's a senior's home and the entrance to the kitchen is part of a, a building facade that used to be on the property. Um, and, and you know the people that are in the building then really get to, to, to read that plaque. Unlike a car driving by at 70 kilometers an hour, they never get to know what it's about. Um, so I, I think stuff like that is actually really keeping the heritage alive. So I, I would challenge you on that. Um, I, I do have a question, Mr. Mayor, through you to Councillor Chan. I, I, was a bit, um, I was a bit confused. It sounded like he was, he was um, advocating for direct ambulance in and out um, and, and enhancing those types of services in, in the facility. And I mean, I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but uh, Councillor Chan, could you maybe explain what you were talking about with, with, with greater ambulance because it's coming to the area? What was, what was that all about? Councillor Chan, do you wish to comment? Uh, Yes. Uh, you know what, uh, to be honest, I, I find that my colleagues uh, question and comments uh, with art. Uh, if you would have uh, listened attentively as what you were saying to someone else this morning Just in a, a council that. meeting, my question is to ask uh, staff or, or the applicant whether in fact the concern being raised about that uh, is would be indeed the case. I did not advocate one way or the other. So. And Mr. Mayor, I was very surprised that actually in of comments that we are commenting and not a colleague's comment, but I want to take an opportunity since the colleague asked, uh, there was never really any hinting, advocating, anything of that sort for the record. Clearly it was seeking clarification um, that Ms. Lang has, uh, Ms. Lang really answered that uh, because that is a concern raised by some residents as I understand it. So that was clarified. Nobody is taking any position, advocating or not advocating for anything. Just found out the facts. Uh, well, I guess at this time we don't know for sure, but that's what the applicant is telling us. Mr. Mayor, it Thank was a simple question. I mean, I don't know why the councillor is being so defensive in his answer. Either he was or wasn't advocating to have more ambulances come to the uh, the property. 
I, I don't think it's necessary to have direct access for ambulances, but no. if that's what the uh, the counselor is saying, it's, uh, it's again, um, with all due respect, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I really resent the fact the counselor keep re representing what I've been trying to ask. I did not at any point in time advocate for any of, I don't know where it comes to, with the idea that I'm advocating for more for ambulance to go there, nor uh, I was saying anything else. I'm only seeking clarification. Um, for the record, there's no position being advocated here, period. We are talking a planning issue here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just so we're clear, Mr. Mayor, just seeking clarification if more ambulance accesses could be facilitated on the property? Or? Comment. His comment was, was he, there going- The to... counselor keeps talking in circles and I'm just trying to figure out exactly what it is. He's, he's expressed himself that he was asking if there was going to be a number of ambulances coming and going and the answer was no. Emergency. Okay, and that's a simple answer. I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I support Care First and I hope this building gets built quickly. I know that the, the people in our community will, will be in there getting great service. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we now have uh, everybody's made their comments, everything's fine. So we are moving. Sorry, where are we on this thing here? Everybody's finished. Okay. So we need to vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And also the same mover and seconder for the adjournment of the meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Everybody safe home.